Good morning. I'm glad you can take a moment to uh, worship, join together, even in this sort of virtual way to gather for worship. Uh, I don't believe that we have any announcements, um, and so we'll go right into the reading for this day, which comes from the prophet Zechariah in the seventh chapter. In the fourth year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, the month of Kislev. The people of Bethel had sent Shar Rizar and Regem Melech together with their men to entreat the Lord by asking the priests of the house of the Lord Almighty and the prophets, should we mourn and fast in the fifth month as we have done for so many years? Then the word of the Lord Almighty came and came to me, to Zechariah, ask all the people of the land and the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and the seventh months for the past 70 years, was it really for me that you fasted? And when you were eating and drinking, were you not just feasting for yourselves? Are these not the words of the Lord that the Lord proclaimed through the earlier prophets when Jerusalem and its surrounding towns were at rest and prosperous and the Negev and the western foothills were settled? The word of the Lord came to Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. In, other words, in your hearts, do not think evil of each other. But they, your ancestors, refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and stopped up their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Almighty had sent by His Spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations when they were where they were strangers. The land was left so desolate behind them that no one could come or go. This is how they made the pleasant land desolate. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I'm driving down the road and I need to stay awake, one of the things I, I will do on occasion is pull out, I have an old iPod, and I'll hook that sucker up and turn on some musicals. Yes, I enjoy musicals, a not very guilty pleasure that probably began back when I was uh, in high school in playing uh, in the pit orchestra uh, for musicals. And one of the musicals I played that has always stuck with me is Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof uh, has, uh, it always struck me as a bit heavy for a bunch of 14 to 18 year olds to be grappling with uh, state-sponsored religious persecution. That was always kind of a, struck me as kind of a heavy topic. Um, and in the middle of this heavier musical, a husband, the, the main uh, lead, Tevya, asks his wife a question that is surprising. It's a surprising question, and it has a surprising response. Tevya asks his, wife, asks his wife, do you love me? And she looks at him and says, I'm your wife. And, and he responds, but, but do you love me? And this begins a whole set of responses and music, and it's an impressive and very poignant little song. But it is a shocking question and a blunt response, and that that caught that came to mind as I was reading Zechariah uh, Zechariah seven because it's that same moment of like a, a surprising question and a very blunt response, an unexpected response. What is happening here, uh, and it takes a moment to understand the bluntness and the, the, the surprise here, but what's happening here is the people of Bethel, they had sent two people, Shaharzar and Regem Melech, and, and to go ask the, the, the people, at the priests and the prophets at the, at the temple, they're rebuilding the temple, they're four years into rebuilding the temple at, uh, after, in the reign of Darius. And, um, uh, the, of the Persian Empire. And, and they send them to ask this question. They ask, we have been fasting, uh, denying ourselves the food we love, we are not eating certain meals. We don't know exactly, when they say fasting, we don't know exactly what their practice was, but they have been fasting for the entire month, fifth month of the year. And they've been fasting like this for 70 years. They have been fasting the fifth month of every year for 70 years as they've been a people in exile 
all the people of this town. They went into exile together and they've stayed together and they've been fasting. And, and is it time for them to stop? Right? They've been fasting to deny themselves and, and, and uh and so they send this delegation and they ask this, this question and they expect either this is they expect either a yes or a no that and they expect either to be told yes you've done good this has been part of, of us learning our lesson and being ready to come back together as a people come out of exile so yes you have, it is time for you to stop fasting the temple's almost done it is time for we us to start uh, practice rejoicing and celebrating what's going on here they expect either to be told yes it's time to stop or no this is important that fasting denying yourself is something that, that you've been doing this whole time continue to do this one month out of the year the temple isn't done uh, get back to us when the temple is done and so should we should we stop this and, and the prophet looks at them the prophet Zechariah he doesn't tell them yes or no he gives them this shocking response and says y'all whiffed y'all have been messing this up all along and it's a surprising thing it's not what they expected to hear. Right, the word of God comes to them, uh, to the prophet Zechariah to pass along, and the word of God comes and, and for them, and they hear, when you, when y'all, the people of Bethel, when y'all fasted and lamented in the fifth month, all of these years, for 70 years, was it for me, God, that you fasted? And when you ate and when you drank, Right? When you feasted and celebrated, aren't you just doing that for yourselves? All this fasting and lamenting, the question is, all of, over all these years, was that something that was for God or was that something that was about yourself? Right? Was that, were you fasting because you had it so hard? Are you lamenting? Are you focused on, man, we've got a rough go and we're fasting because we're suffering so badly and we're just focused inwards, right? Are you focused on yourselves and your problems? Or in fasting, are you listening and understanding why you ended up in this situation in the first place, right? <laughs> There's an odd parallel here between when someone is sent to their room, you send a, 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 your, your child to their room, think about what you've done, and they go to their room and they just, I mean, what God is asking them is, did you really think about what you've done? Or were you just thinking about how harumph, harumph, I just didn't want, I want to go down and play with my Legos again, and I want to play with my Legos, right? You can tell how old my children are from that comment, right? But, like, what really bothered you here? And so, when you go and when you feast again, are you going to feast and celebrate that you get to play with your Legos again? Or are you feasting because you have learned and now you are doing better and now you are pleasing me, your God and your Lord, right? What are you going to celebrate? Do you understand what's really going on here? This is not the answer they were expecting, right? They were expecting, yes, you've done well, it's time to stop, or no, you need to keep on doing this thing that's important. And what they got told was, you've been whiffing on this all along. You whiffed, right? You have been using fasting. Fasting <coughs> it is a practice of creating a space, right? To fast is to say, I'm not gonna do this thing that I enjoy. I'm not going to eat this meal. I'm not going to, to, to get involved in, in not going to, you can fast. I mean, whatever it is that you take real joy and pleasure in. For me, it would be things like video games or food or something like that. Um, if I'm going to fast, it is not just fasting and not playing or, or, not, or not cooking or not eating this food. It's not doing it so that I can create this space to pay attention to something that I need to pay attention to. And what the people of Bethel are being told is, is you fasted, but you didn't actually use that space to pay attention to what mattered. You used this to sort of just keep on lamenting about how hard you had it. Right? You grumbled and sat in your room, but you didn't actually focus on why you were sent to your room. You didn't learn your lesson. And, and so, Zechariah repeats what God has said before, that uh, you, you 
needed to learn this lesson, and Zechariah says, you've heard this before, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another, do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, the poor, do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. Right? You should have been lamenting and fasting as a way to focus on that. Like That is what the call of God is to do, and that is what God had called you to do long ago. Zechariah tells us that he's repeating himself because he's saying this in 518 B.C. And back in 760 B.C., 200 unchanged years earlier, the prophet Amos had said the same thing and said it to the people before they went into exile. Uh, the prophet Amos is one of the first of the prophets who we have his words written down in a, a book uh, that, that has his name, the book of Amos. It focused on what the prophet Amos brings to the God's people. And, and in the middle of this, it's in Amos 5, we hear... I hate and I despise your festivals, says the Lord your God, and I take no delight in your assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Right? It's the same argument Zechariah is making, right? Zechariah is telling the people at Bethel, your worship, your fasting was meant to you to be used so that you can focus on what God desires for how you are to live as a community. And then the prophet Amos had told this to this, the people to over 200 years ago. Your worship was meant to make it so that you would focus on uh, letting justice flow down like, like waters flowing down across the entire land. And, and you're not. And so this is, this is not anything new. This is the same lesson that you didn't learn before the exile. And you, you still need to learn it. Fasting is useful in as much as it helps people back then and today listen to the call to show kindness and mercy to one another, to pay attention to those who are in need. And Zechariah tells the town of Bethel, you whiffed. Right? You got, you prepared this space to listen, but you never actually listened to what God was calling to do, you to do in your own community. You just used that, that time to complain. You used that time when you weren't eating to complain that you weren't eating. I do feel sorry for the two people who have to go back and tell Bethel this. Like they had been sent to the, they had been sent to get good news, right? That you, we're either done or we're almost done. But either way, like there's hope. Like we're almost done with this, this practice of fasting. And they go back and they have to tell them, you know, this practice of fasting. We just got told that we've been doing it wrong for seventy years. That that can't have been fun to say. We got with it that they're fasting. We fasted, and it's to, and we ended up just focusing on the fact that we weren't eating instead of focusing on using that time to focus on what God was calling us to do, what type of God, people God was calling us to be. And, and it's an odd thing about this story is that we don't know what happens next. Right? Usually we understand, we hear the consequences. We we don't we don't hear this here, and so I, I don't know what happened. I don't know how this word was received. It would have been hard to hear. We read this today, and it, it's a challenging passage to read. As I read and ponder this passage, it seems to me that it challenges us when it comes to how we listen and how we, we focus, right? The people of Bethel, they had been focused on their own hardships, and, and that is what's called out as, as the problem. Don't focus on yourself and how bad you have it, right? Focus on the lesson to be learned in this moment. And, and so what, what I have found most helpful when it comes to reading this passage and trying to understand what to take from this is to read it and to be very clear about the second person plural imperatives. And if you're having flashback to English classes, I'm sorry. But th this really is important to, to understand this, right? The second person plural, y'all, I can't spell it, don't ask me how to, whenever I try I get it wrong. Or so I have been informed by my friends in the South. But y'all is the second person plural. 
And the, the pronouns and the verbs in this passage are second person plural and second person plural imperative. Like, y'all need to do this. Y'all have to do this. Y'all get off your rears and go do this. Like, that's the tone of what Zechariah gets into with this. And so hearing this again with, with a kind of a southern slant, starting in uh, Zechariah 7, 5, when y'all fasted, was it to hear me, your God? Or were you fasting because you all were having such a hard time and you wanted to obsess about it? And when you all feast, are you feasting because you're celebrating that you and I, God, the God in the community of Bethel, are you, fast, are you feasting because now you're square again and listening? Or are you feasting because you're excited that things are going better for you. Is this all about y'all? Or all y'all, as you could say? Right? Or is this, can you learn something better? Right? Listen again to what God has been saying for centuries. Y'all must make a community that delivers just living for all people. That's that imperative second person plural. Y'all must. Y'all must make a community that is just for all people. Y'all must make and construct mercy and compassion for others. Y'all must create a community where people don't get messed with when they are different, when they're not from around here when they're having a hard time. Y'all cannot even think about how much you might want someone else to get what's coming to them. Not gonna work, right? That, that's, this, that's the passage when you translate it with that, those second person plurals, right? It's, this is what y'all have to do. This is what y'all and Bethel must do. This is what fasting was meant to focus you on. Fasting is creating this space so that you can pay attention to what God desires. And if you listen to this, especially that part at the end about how you can't even want someone to have a hard time. You can't even think evil on someone else. And yes, that, is, that does smack of what Jesus says. It's in Matthew 5, 22, that we can't even, we're not even called to be able to say, you fool, and, in, and, and hope someone has, uh, it's in the Sermon on the Mount, 5, 22, right? That, it's our connection there. The second person plural imperative drives what God has to, says, has to say to the people of Bethel. This is what y'all should have been listening about all these years. It's what got y'all sideways in the first place. And so now it's time to focus on this. This, challenge, this passage is a challenge to me and, and to us, I believe, because me and us so that would that be we all or just just us i guess right? because it is telling us that it's our responsibility to listen right? it is our responsibility to listen and i i think this is true it makes sense right to to understand that lamenting and fasting is not about focusing on our own struggles but it is about creating a space in which we can hear god's concerns for others, so that having listened, then we can go out and respond and ma make a more just community. But it begins with, spent, with fasting, spending time, creating a space to listen to others, and doing so intentionally. Listening to those who are not here or whose voices are hard to hear. Right? Listening to those who are having a hard time. Listening without trying to jump in and just fix it because we know exactly what needs to happen. But listening and paying attention to the other person. Listening and understanding what we don't understand. Listening so that we, we can begin to understand. And this listening can be done in person. It can be done through reading. It can be done through watching something. There are many ways to do it, but to listen means that we first carve out a space uh, from what we're already hearing to listen to something that we aren't hearing right now. And, and so that, to me, the challenge of this passage, and this is what I will be doing this week, having heard this passage, is I need to think about the things that I do not understand about this community and about this nation. Right? I need to make sure there are things that I don't understand that don't make sense to me. I need to carve out some time this week and not 
listen to myself complaining about how hard I have it, and not listen to, to the things that I already know, but to intentionally listen and, and do what the people of Bethel had, Bethel had been challenged to, to do. To listen and not focus on our own problems, but to listen and to understand the challenges, the problems that, that are beyond me. The call of God by the prophets is this second person imperative plural, right? Y'all go and create a more just community. Y'all go and create this community where justice flows across the land like waters, where people don't believe, don't, where people get a fair shake, where people are not complaining because it's not how it is meant to be, right? And what this moment with Zechariah makes clear is that the only way that our communities are transformed is by listening, right? in doing what Bethel failed to do. Bethel set aside time, and they didn't use it to listen. I hope that this week, I mean, sit down, make some plans. This week, we can listen to those we aren't already hearing so that we might further understand and understanding we might be able to do a little bit more to make a more just community that we live in. Amen. There is a hymn in the hymnal, United Methodist Hymnal, number 592. It's called, When the Church of Jesus. And I, I love the hymn and I love the music, but I must confess that um, it's not the easiest hymn to sing, and so I'm not going to sing it, but it is, uh, a hymn is poetry, it is a, a prayer written as poetry that is sung, and so we're going to use this two verses of this hymn as our, our prayer this, this morning, and so let us pray. Lord, when the church of Jesus shuts its outer door, lest the roar of traffic drown the voice of prayer. May our prayers, Lord, make us ten times more aware that the world we banish is our Christian care. If our hearts are lifted where devotion soars, high above this hungry, suffering world of ours, lest our hymns should drug us to forget its needs, forge our Christian worship into Christian deeds. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you this day and always. Go forth now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.